pie charts, line graphs, bar charts, tables, maps, and diagrams. In your IELTS Academic Writing Task 1, you'll be required to describe one of them. Today, we're going to look at some sample answers for each type of task and discuss how to score higher in the four criteria examiners use to assess your answers. It's Asia. Let's get started. Let's take an example from Cambridge IELTS 16. The charts below show the changes in ownership of electrical appliances and amount of time spent doing housework in households in one country between 1920 and 2019. Summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. Write at least 150 words. Task 1 assesses our ability to write a report summarizing data presented in a number of possible ways. The question never varies, never. The idea then is for you to find the key elements in the information. Above all, ask yourself, what is this really all about? Is there a key factor or some part unto it all? Your answer to this question is absolutely essential if you want to get a high score in task achievement. The first of the four criteria examiners assess. You can find it in the IELTS band descriptors, the document that lists all the requirements for each criterion and each band score. These band descriptors can be a bit of a mystery sometimes. For example, you'd have to be an IELTS examiner to know what a band 9 in task achievement really means when it says fully satisfies all the requirements of the task. But for lower bands, notice the word overview. Band 7 presents a clear overview of the main trends, differences or stages. Band 6 presents an overview with information appropriately selected. Band 5 presents detail mechanically with no clear overview. Band 5 tells us where some test takers go wrong. They jump in too fast and just describe what they see. There is very little to no attempt to interpret it. Have a good look at the task again. What overview could we give here? What's the main thing you've learned? There is a fairly obvious connection between the two charts. Can you see it? The more appliances at home, the less time spent on cooking, washing and cleaning. So in the report, our first sentence presents the task. You can do this by paraphrasing the task sentence. Our second sentence is our overview. Here is a possible version. The two charts provide data on the percentage of families in an unnamed country that possessed labor-saving devices together with the average time spent weekly on domestic chores over a 100-year period. The data reveals a clear relationship between the growth in ownership of such devices and the decreasing amount of time devoted to household tasks. Remember how important it is to also summarize what we see and read using synonyms. Three things stand out here. The first is, yes, the synonyms. To achieve a high score not only in task achievement but also lexical resource, you need to paraphrase. So, households become families. Electrical appliances are labor-saving devices. Time spent can be time devoted. Ownership changes to the verb possessed. And the charts no longer show, they provide data on. Secondly, notice in this first part how general everything is. No figures, no raw data yet. That's an important point to keep in mind. Wait until the second and third paragraph to give out the details. 
The third point is the overview. Sentence two. It shows that you have understood what the graphic data is essentially all about. Right, let's move on to another task descriptor and look at lexical resource or your vocabulary. The examiner wants to see how well you can use words to express very precise meanings. The examiner is also on the lookout for uncommon words, words that are perfectly appropriate in the context, but not the usual common words. This shows your range of vocabulary, how wide and deep it is. Another important aspect is how you can combine words together in a natural, accurate way. We call this collocation. How words go together, such as do your best or make a mess. And errors? Well, in the descriptors, it does point to inaccurate spelling and errors in word formation that would not help you obtain a really high band score. But then again, at band 7 and 8, and to some extent even 9, some inaccuracies are tolerated. We also have, of course, synonyms to vary our vocabulary. And now let's try and write some sentences. I want to be very precise to show my range and depth of vocabulary and to use some uncommon words if possible. Let's go back to our first domestic appliances chart. What do you notice? The percentage of homes possessing refrigerators grew dramatically after they were first introduced in 1920, climbing to 50% ownership in just 20 years and to 90% by 1960. By the year 1980, the peak of 100% was reached, a figure that has been maintained throughout the remainder of the period surveyed. Vacuum cleaners were also found in every home, but from the year 2000 onwards. After having risen steadily from 30% in 1920, to 90% in 1980. However, by 2020, only three quarters of all homes possessed a washing machine. Ownership of this appliance rose gradually from 40% in 1920 to 70% in 1960. And despite suffering a slight fall over the following 20 years, have maintained a steady growth since. A lot of increases and decreases. So we need to offer a range of synonyms. We have the verbs grow, climb, rise. They collocate with adverbs dramatically, steadily, gradually. And the nouns peak, fall, growth, which collocate with to reach a peak, a slight fall, steady growth. If there is no change, neither up nor down, you can use the verb maintain. Remember too that you must be accurate with data and vary how you refer to it whenever possible. Here we see, for example, not only percentages, but also fractions, as in three quarters of all homes instead of 75%. Similarly, 25% is one quarter, one fourth, or one in four, for example, one in four people. 33% is one third or one in three. 50% is half. 66% is two thirds or two in three. I know that task one requires a lot of specific words to describe the charts and maps, which we don't use every day. That's why for my courses, I even created a vocabulary for task one, where you can learn the essential words and see examples of how to use them in task one answers. So if you have some time before your exam, know that learning vocabulary for task one definitely helps. And now let's change the topic and the type of task as well. Most of us think of grammar when we learn another language. We want to get it right. And the examiner is looking at our range of structures, 
how complex they are, as well as noticing errors. If our sentences are pretty much error-free and complex, we're looking at band 8 or 9. At band 7 will include some minor errors, but also show a good control of grammar and punctuation. So let's look at this in the context of a task 1 showing maps or plans. These are interesting because, above all, they clearly illustrate change. And in the example we're going to look at, compare the point in the past with one in the future. So first, take a good look with me at the question. The diagrams below show the site of a school in 2004 and the plan for changes to the school site in 2024. And we see two maps. 2004 and 2024. What are the major changes you see here? Have these changes already happened? No, they're planned for the future. And when the task was written, 2024 was still future. So you need to show different ways of describing future events. Student numbers are predicted to rise to over 60% from 600 in 2004 to 1000 by the year 2024. To accommodate this increase, the path that joins the main entrance to the sports field will be shortened, allowing the two existing school buildings to be linked. Additionally, on the site where the sports field currently stands, a third school building is to be constructed together with a second car park to the right of this new teaching area. Connecting this car park to the main entrance will be a new road, which will pass along the south side of the existing school buildings. Meanwhile, the sports field will be relocated to the other side of this new road, directly south of the second car park. We can use several verb forms to talk about the future. The future simple, will be, will pass along. There are also a lot of passive structures because we are emphasizing changes that will be made and it's not important who will make them. Will be shortened, will be relocated, the passive voice. But there are also verbs in the present when we know that something has already been planned, are predicted to rise, is to be constructed. On to our final criterion, coherence and cohesion. Your answer is coherent if it's logically organized. That's your structure, your paragraphs. Your answer is cohesive if your sentences are linked together and there is a smooth transition from one idea to the next. Let's have a look at a diagram from Cambridge IELTS 16. The diagram below shows the process for recycling plastic bottles. One issue here, perhaps, is our overview. With this type of question, it's important to point out the overall purpose of the process and the key stages. The diagram illustrates a recycling process describing a series of nine stages through which used plastic bottles are remanufactured as brand new plastic items, such as pans, bags and containers, which eventually, in turn, will likely be recycled themselves. Describing the steps involved can be simply sequential, using words like first, then, and so on. But it's also good to show how the steps in the process are linked in terms of consequence. First, plastic bottles are placed in specified recycling bins, from which they are collected and then sent to recycling centers for sorting. This sentence covers the first two stages in the beginning of the third, simply linked by first, from which, and then to show the reason behind the sorting process, stage 3. And how that leads to stages 4 and 5, we have this. 
Once the bottles suitable for recycling have been selected, they are compressed and converted into large blocks that are subsequently sent through crushing machines. This sentence explains why stage 5, crushing, is necessary. The crushing process is necessary to produce pieces that are sufficiently small to be later turned into plastic pellets. So this one connects what happens after crushing to the making of the plastic pellets. Before that, however, the crushed plastic is thoroughly washed. As you might have noticed, we have no conclusion, although it's really important to include an overview near the start of the answer to show that you really understand what it's all about. And no opinion or revealing insider or previous knowledge. So we're never gonna find in task one something like, after 2024, the school will be a better place to study because of the extra space. A better place to study is your opinion that shouldn't be there. So just say the school will be extended. So one third of your writing score depends on how well you can meet all the requirements we touched on today. For in-depth preparation, you should learn how to analyze the data and select what we call the key features, what to write about in each paragraph of your report, and how to address different types of tasks. You can learn all this step-by-step step in my online courses, which can help you prepare in less time and achieve a higher score. I'll link them in the description. And if you'd like a taster, Watch this in-depth lesson on how to write an introduction to your task one report. This is a free preview from my paid course and don't forget to download the slides for that video too. And thank you so much for watching me today. Good luck with your preparation and your exam. Bye!